Bear with me as I am a little bit deaconing, a little bit running the iPad, a little bit trying to figure out why our sound isn't working. So I invite us all to take a brief moment of pause and to exhale, unclench your jaw. Good morning. <laughs> My friends, today we heard about a dinner party, a very special dinner party. Who's ever been to a dinner party or had family over for dinner? Like Thanksgiving time, yeah. What are some things that you might experience at a dinner party? You go to a dinner party, there, there are certain things that you might do, such as eat dinner. <laughs> what else? What's that? A lot of talking, yep. What about, do you talk kind of in do you talk to a lot of people or just one person? Yeah, that's right, both. So you can usually expect lots of food. Sometimes the tables are set really nicely. You know, there might be like flowers on the centerpieces. Sometimes there's music. Sometimes you catch up with people you haven't seen in a while. So it's, it's always a lot of fun. Now, on the count of three, right, you guys need to help me, I want you to share your favorite dinner party foods with me, okay? One two, three. Mac and cheese. I'll remember all of those, I promise. So now that we've kind of established the norms of a dinner party, let's think about the dinner party that our good friend John told us about. In fact, just for a few moments, let's pretend that we're at that dinner party with Jesus. Now, here are some things, since we're guests, here are some things that you would know. One, this dinner party is six days before the Passover feast. Does anyone know what Passover is? Passover is a major holiday in the Jewish tradition that celebrates God freeing the Israelites, God's people, out of slavery in Egypt and out of freedom or into freedom in the Promised Land. So it's a big deal for Jesus and his friends. They're getting excited. This is a big day. The second thing you should know is that Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, our hosts for tonight, are all siblings. They are brothers and sisters, and they live in a big, big house together. And the last thing, three, this is when we learn about Judas Iscariot, one of Jesus' disciples who would later betray him. It's a little tense right now, and there's a lot going on this evening, so let's tread lightly, folks. Now, this is a great story, and this is a wonderful dinner party because it highlights the hospitality that Mary shows for Jesus, that all three siblings show for Jesus. What's a way that we can show hospitality to others? What about just waving hi? You guys are real chatty today. <laughs> um, so... Welcoming people into your home in the ancient world was a deep sign of respect. Remember, food was not easy to get. Water really wasn't. People were kind of covered in sand all the time. It was a desert. So this, this is a big deal. And, and what Mary and Martha are saying to Jesus by having him and his friends over is, we love you, we respect you, we invite you. And clearly, Jesus has those same feelings, otherwise he wouldn't have gone. So we know that Martha's going to serve the food tonight. Any guesses? What, what is Martha going to serve us at this dinner party? Is Martha going to serve KFC? Hummus? Bread? What about fish? Fish? And maybe figs, maybe, if we're really lucky and wine, if I had to guess. These, those are the staples of the ancient world. Um, so now, here's where I really need some help from you guys. We talked about the norms of a dinner party, right? You know, you have food, you have drinks, you talk to people, there's music. But can you tell me what happens after you're done eating? What's something that you do after you're done eating? Go to bed, you could play games. Does anyone help? 
the hostess or host wash the dishes? Katie knows, yeah. So some, we'll help clean up, even if we just carry our plate into the kitchen or wherever Mary and Martha will wash the dishes. So you're hanging out, you're having a nice time, you're just, you're finishing catching up. And then all of a sudden, Mary is, is taking her hair and wiping Jesus' feet with it. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that's not necessarily something I might expect to see at a dinner party. <laughs> Any, anything goes post-COVID, but even that's a little unusual. <laughs> so our sweet, sweet friend Mary, so sweet Mary, has just wiped very expensive perfume with her hair onto Jesus' feet. And remember what I said, a lot of people in the ancient world were covered in sand because it was so desertous and so dry. So poor Mary probably has sand in her hair now. <laughs> Does anyone want to guess how expensive the perfume was? Oh, Griff, if only. Good guess, though. Any other guesses? In today's U.S. dollars, the perfume was estimated at $50,000. Again, today dollars. And so Mary took her hair and she wiped $50,000 worth of perfume on Jesus' feet. That's a lot of money. That's like a new car. And Mary, our sweet, sweet, faithful Mary, she did this very deliberately. See, she didn't view the perfume feet washing as a transaction. She didn't think to herself, I'll do this for Jesus and he'll do something back for me. That was not her intent at all. The perfume, despite being worth a lot of money, suddenly lost its value. It didn't matter how much the perfume cost because this interaction and this special time with Jesus was worth everything, everything to Mary. Remember, Jesus raised her brother from the dead. They had a close relationship. Mary knew and she experienced firsthand that Jesus is worth everything. So anything else is kind of not worth all that much when we have Jesus' love. And so even though Judas tried to reprimand Mary with ulterior motives, by the way, Mary did the right thing. See, Jesus knew how much he meant to her and her family and the people of Israel. Jesus valued and loved the people in his life. He gave them a sense of purpose and a sense of dignity. And that, we, we cannot pay for that. We cannot name a price for the love that God gives to us. And Jesus' love and respect of all of the people in Israel and each one of you and me and Bill and your mom and dad, it's worth everything, just like Mary taught us. So friends, thank you for coming with me to this dinner party with Jesus. I hope you'll wash your plate for our hostess as you leave. Amen. <laughs>